This is the Electronic Church of God, Arizona, presenting the Lord's Care Ministry, provided by James Bird, narrated by Forrest Grote. Thank you. Welcome to the Electronic Church of God of Arizona and the Lord's Care Ministry. Today is the first work day of the week. The day our pagans call the sun, Sunday or Day of the Sun. They also say it's November 19th of the year 2012. As I say, today... Throughout your Bible, you will find that it is Baal's, Baal's day of worship, the day of the sun, for the sun worshipers, the S-U-N, and not the S-O-N. Well, brethren, with all that, let's get right on over into the Lord's care ministry. A year to search for knowledge and truth, day 323 of the year 2012. Today's little study is when he has come when he has come brethren i suggest you write the chapter and verses down that we give you so that you can go back and study the whole context at your own leisure also brethren you can use the pause button down you down below that you see below this video to start and stop this video study as we go along well brother with that, let's get right into when he has come. And to do that, we're going to start in John chapter 16 and verse 8. When he has come, he will convict the world of sin. Very few of us know anything about conviction of sin. We know the experiences of being disturbed because we have done wrong things. But conviction of sin through the Spirit of God blots out every relationship on earth that makes us aware of only one. In Psalms chapter 51 and verse 4 we read, Against you, you only, have I sinned. When a person is convicted of sin in this way, he knows with every bit of conscience that God would not dare to forgive him. If God did forgive him, then this person will have a stronger sense of justice than God. But God does forgive. But it costs the breaking of his heart with grief in the death of Christ to enable him to do so. The great miracle of grace of God is that he forgives sin. And it is the death of Jesus Christ alone that en enables the divine nature to forgive and to remain true to itself in doing so. It is shallow nonsense to say that God forgive us because he is love. Once we have been convicted of sin, we will never say this again. The love of God means Calvary, nothing less. The love of God is spelled out on the stake and nowhere there, where else. The only basis which God can forgive me is the stake of Christ. It is there that his conscience is satisfied. Forgiveness does not merely mean that I am safe from hell and I will have been made ready for heaven. No one would accept forgiveness on that level. And brethren, no place in the Bible do you find at any time that anyone but Jesus Christ himself went back to heaven. You were born here on earth, you were made of dust, and here is where you will stay. Forgiveness means that I am forgiven into a newly created relationship which identifies me with God in Christ. The miracle of redemption is that God turns me, the unholy one, into a standard of himself, the holy one. He does this by putting into me a new nature, the nature of Jesus Christ. 
Heavenly Father, bring the reign of your Son in every land. May all rulers fall down before him. All nations serve him. Let his name endure forever and be continued as long as the sun. And all humankind be blessed in him. Brethren, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 through 24, we read, For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto Jews a stumbling block, and unto Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called both Jew and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Blessed is he who loves God's precept. Precept, pardon me. In Psalms chapter 1 and verse 2, his delight is in the law of the Lord. Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware of the tradition of men that make void the word of God. And if you make this first day of the week, the day that our pagans and Baal calls the day of the sun, Sunday, then you're making void the word of God. No matter how much of the other commandments that you keep, you can keep all the other nine just perfectly. You can love Jesus Christ. You can love the Father in heaven. You love your mother and father. You don't steal and you covet but you break the least of the commandments. As James 2.10 says, if you break the least one, you break the least commandment, you've broken them all. I don't say that. Your Bible says that. Don't believe me. Believe the Lord Jesus Christ but that had the whole Bible written for you. It took him for 1,500 years and 44 writers to complete that Bible. And all of it is the Word of God. And believe it, every word that he tells you to do, believe the commandments, the precepts, the statutes. Sometime I'll tell you what all them statutes mean, but right now, we wouldn't have the time to go into all that. Brethren, if you want to see the kingdom and have eternal salvation with the Father and the Son, get down on your knees. Repent for following the tradition of men, the tradition of Sunday as the Lord's Day, because the Lord's Day is mentioned only once. And it's the thousand year reign and you're not in it now. Sunday is not the Lord's day. That is the day of Baal. Get mad at me for saying it? Shut this off and never see me again? That's up to you. But read your Bible if you're a follower of Jesus Christ and believe it. It's the only way you can go. And while you're on your knees, ask him for forgiveness for following the tradition of men. Ask the Father and the Son to bring their spirit within you, to drive away all doubt of his word, and strengthen your faith in the Father and his Son. And brethren, while you're on your knees, ask for the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of this love letter he has given to you, and this love letter is your own Bible. Well, brethren, with that, we're going to close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.